Praise the Lord, my dear brothers and sisters. Hope you're all doing fine and God has taken good care of your health, wealth, peace, prosperity is what I firmly believe. Because there is one promise given in the Bible that is under the grace of Jesus, there is all sufficiency. In all things we do, there is abundance in every good work, right? Second Corinthians 9, 8 and 8, 9, right? God supplies all um, i mean supplies our needs according to the according to his riches and glory philippians 4:13 so these are the words which really grab my attention all the time when i go through challenges in my life i always tend to get reminder of these words and i will tell you in the last words in the last days especially the there is nothing else that could save you and me other than the word of god you may have someone helping you and the next day they may become your adversary. Your own family may even say, you know, you're not right and you, you may be hurt. And yeah, some, some people are even kicked out of their families because they stood for God, right? But whoever may be on your side or not on your side, there is one person who's always on your side, who always understands you, always ready to forgive you, who is compassionate, bound to mercies, everlasting mercies. And his name is Lord Jesus, right? His incarnate deity, it's God who took that form and he himself came down in the form of Jesus. And as long as you are subjected to this name and as long as you have surrendered your life and dedicated your life in sincerity and honesty to this name, there is nothing in this world that could hold you, right? So with this introduction, we welcome you to this session and uh, this is not a series uh, generally we get into the biblical series and we get into a lot of facts the recent series are about seven churches and seven spirits we have done a wonderful uh, session and uh, it's available in the youtube channel you can please go uh, subscribe and get access and then you enjoy those sessions and it's going to be very helpful for your life and the second uh, series which we have done is uh, more to do with um, the uh, uh, sorry the second coming of Jesus uh, in, in the sense from Matthew 24 and 25 we have explained um, right uh, about Jesus is coming soon and how prepared you are how prepared uh, are you to meet him in the mid air right and these are the things which you should definitely watch right because this is going to help you get closer to god and uh, that alone can help us get closer to god right that realization walking in conscience okay so this is a short session and we have created a separate uh, playlist even for this and uh, you will definitely find short and interesting messages from gospel that's the title of the playlist and you will definitely find that um, interesting a lot of short sessions are being done i cannot promise you this session is going to end in only one hour maybe it will like get extended i do not know all right without any delay let's step into the session right today we are going to talk about the parable of sheep and goats how many of you have heard this from bible sheep and goats right i'm going to take you through the bible i'm going to give you explanations um, but then I always wondered, is there definitely a difference between the sheep and goats? Aren't they closest neighbors? The face also look the same, right? Long face. Uh, and they also, you know, cry out in the same voice, meh, right? Have you heard sheep saying meh and then uh, goats barking like bow bow like a dog? Actually, no. So I always wondered what is a big deal right they belong to the same family isn't it but bible doesn't look at these sheep and goats the same way as we look right from the from the race they belong to that sheep race or goat race <laughs> rac right um so doesn't god like goats there are many questions that came on top of my mind or when god separates the sheep and the goats you would want to be a goat what is the parable of sheep and the goats actually mean? Welcome. We will 
explore together and find answers for all of these questions and uh, we will see what best to do right so just to give you a little bit of uh, background at the end of his olivet prophecy jesus uh, spoke about three parables about how to live um, now to prepare for his kingdom <clears throat> the third one almost um, convince you that god who created all creatures right doesn't like goats i'm i'm going to prove it to you in a moment right so when the son of man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him then he will sit on the throne of his glory all the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate them from one another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats right then he will also say to those on the left hand that is goats depart from me you cursed that's why i told you that god really don't like goats and there are, there could be various reasons and that's what we are going to explore together depart from me you cursed into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil <clears throat> and his angels matthew 25 um, 31 to 32 and matthew 25 41 you can um, you can see these verses right now this everlasting punishment is the opposite of eternal life verse number 46 okay uh, i'm already turning my bible to matthew 25 46 um, i also encourage you strongly please have your bibles with you yeah start reading the bible systematically which will only help you getting closer to god and these will go away into everlasting punishment but the righteous into eternal life matthew 25 46 correct so likewise if you see in 41 then he will say to those on the left depart from me you cursed into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels so this everlasting punishment is the opposite to eternal life right the opposite to devil is god opposite to hell is heaven right everything is opposite opposite to light is darkness we all know this opposite to valley is mountains so everything for each and everything there is an opposite right there is an opposite to sinful deeds holy deeds versus sinful deeds to understand what the bible means and does it mean and and doesn't mean by this um you need to really be well versed in this uh, scriptures scriptures are the one will ask question and at the same time it will also shed light it will give you the clarity now you 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 definitely have lot of explanations from bible about the punishment of the wicked when they are going to be thrown it's not about <clears throat> um how they are going to be punished and you see in many of the other religious uh, divine books explaining yeah they will be made to lie on uh, nails and uh, yeah they'll be tortured this way that way and all that and um, they also take a lot of movies about it and stuff like that but our bible doesn't talk much after judgment except for the fact that you are going to be thrown into the lake of fire don't you think that itself is a good enough punishment which is good enough for you to <laughs> burn in the lake of fire have you tried uh, just putting your hands on the fire i mean you light a candle and then you just put your fingers over that for for one second you will understand I- i'm sure all of us have gone through that experiences right in kitchen we would have got burned um, accidentally you don't do it willingly anybody here that uh, want that wants to burn their fingers or hands willingly no right but unknowingly you become that willing category unknowingly right uh, unawareness taking things very lightly not cautious no watching and praying taking the words of god very casually so what happens you become um you know you you fall on the side of the willing category that wants to jump into the lake of fire and enjoy as if you jump into the swimming pool yeah pool of water uh, how 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 excited it is right when you play in the beach how excited when you see the waves coming you want to dive some people think that's how the lake of fire is going to be not consciously but un- un- unknowingly they are being fooled 
by the wiles of the devil about which i have spoken 50 sessions how the evil spirits deceive right and how the wiles of the devil act against the mankind how they confuse them lead them into perplexion make them quarrel with each other yeah these are all the spirit related matters in fact i call it as spiritual warfare right and that's where the christendom or christians must watch out every day therefore you are spared in the day of judgment you walk into eternity you don't walk into the lake of fire yeah it's terrible bible says you will be thrown into the lake of fire why that thrown word is used nobody want to jump there right they'll be saying ah don't throw me don't throw me and all that i've seen some people before death they'll be exclaiming screaming yeah i i don't know um, bible doesn't talk much about that um, except a few saints of god like stephen who said that i'm already seeing jesus uh, there isn't much of expressions about uh, seeing angels witnessing that yeah they have come to receive me or take me uh, of course i have heard certain testimonies but uh, i i don't know how to equate it with the bible and uh, uh, explain probably we will see um, uh, if i can do a session um, to cover that uh, perspective right some people have testified that angels have come to receive me and uh, they they are going to take me to heaven and some people would scream I don't want to go. I don't want to go. Minutes later, they will be dead and gone. Why? I think they are seeing something else, right? Um, maybe they remind, they remember their past. They get reminded of the past, and the angels are telling that they are going to be taken to hell. I do not know, right? Which is not true, also, right? Because the day of judgment does not yet happen. Then why they scream? So I do not know. We can't get uh, clear explanations of that sort from Bible. But what I can see is. Um, on that day nobody will be willing to jump into the lake of fire although the judgment is pronounced by god saying that you wicked person you goat you cursed get lost from my sight depart from me yeah you cursed into the lake of everlasting fire prepared for the devils and and the angels actually you know what i would like to tell you something here we will get into the discussion of goats and sheep in a moment but i'll tell you the original design uh, which God, um, um, you know, in which God created His world, the original blueprint. If you take and see how the how the Lord God created us, the world in six days, all creations, including Adam and Eve, there isn't something called as hell or lake of fire. Why? God created this world and Adam and Eve with all confidence that they are going to be the obedient children. They are going to be falling on His side. That's why that was not part of his design. But when sin entered to this world, right, place of torment was created, hell, where the mankind was thrown. But then the lake of fire was originally designed by God. It was existing for the angels. That's why I want to emphasize, right, Matthew 25, 31, 32, 41. If you take and read, it was prepared for the devils and the fallen angels. Or the leader of the fallen angels. Who is that? Lucifer and his host. Ezekiel 28. You can take and read. Right? They rebelled against God. And God pushed them out of heaven. And the lake of fire is prepared for them. Now, right now, they are in bottomless pit. And they are allowed to come to earth. Because why? That's a challenge between God and devil. Saying that, hey, you have all powers. Therefore, you, you can do anything with that power. Give me that power. And see what happens. That's why even he allowed... Uh, to you know tempt his uh, servant job but don't take his life right and god allows temptations not more than what we could bear right because why the challenge happens you may be righteous you may be unrighteous that's a different story right or you are righteous and then you you, uh, you uh, satan goes and argues with god saying that he's righteous why because you have given him everything you have taken good care of him that was the argument right when god called him look at my servant job have you seen anybody righteous like him? He says, yeah, you blessed him with everything. Then, you know what? Nothing is wrong with him. Try to take away his possessions and his family. Then you will know. Then he says, you know, let me inflict his uh, health with sickness. Then you will know. Then finally, you know, job one. Like that, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, not beyond what we could bear. And even during the days of temptation, right? Accordingly, he will make way to escape. But because a God is God of compassion, mercies everlasting mercies that is his character you believe or not you believe the word you are identifying yourself as christian by the bible 
by the standards of Bible, by the words of the Bible, then you need to believe this. You have, you then you 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 make the right choice, right? You be on part of, uh, you you be part of devil and the worldly pleasures, and therefore you enjoy your life until you until you die and then go to hell. Yeah, that's what Bible says in Revelation twenty two eleven. Those who are filthy, let them become more filthy. Yeah, you love that, go. Your choice. So my original point is nobody wants to be thrown. Sorry, nobody wants to jump willingly into the lake of fire after they have got to know known after they have got to know the final uh, verdict from God after the judgment, white throne judgment. Beloved, don't you think we are we are we are portraying ourselves as like the bunch of idiots and fools? Why can't you judge yourself now according to the standards of Bible? Because why? God is telling you by what standards He is going to judge you and me. There is no hidden secret. God has not hidden a book, rule book or a law book. Right? See, even the citizens of any nation, the law is quite available, visible. Right? And that's called as democracy. Else it becomes what? Autocracy. Right? Or dictatorship where there is no law. Suddenly, you know, you know that during the Hitler days, how Jews were tortured. Suddenly they will enter into the shop, they will burn it to fire and they will kick them, everybody out to the street. No law, no law and order. That's not the way how the, you know, the governments run today. Every nation has got some sort of law and the laws are made visible to the citizens. And also what they have made visible is also the punishment, the manner in which they will be punished if they violate the law and disturb the order of the government yeah causing uh, destruction to the public or public properties or whatever right you you endanger the life of a human being according to this law according to this act according to this rule according to this sect you are going to be punished they make visible today also the law book is visible you want to know the penal code laws it is available in google if you are an indian yeah of course in the us or you can go consult a lawyer he's going to tell you everything Yes, you have a law book. That's democracy. They don't hide anything. If the governments, which are run by politicians, right, half of them speak lies, and there are good politicians too. I'm not talking about them. But there are bad politicians, right, who kill people, murder them, and etc., etc. You ask me who they are, I do not know. But I keep hearing those messages. And they don't come out, right? Anyway, I'm not here to talk about politics. But these governments, have been formed based on certain legislation laws and rules which are made visible man-made government is going to be so concerned compassionate to the citizens of their nation although there is nothing good in the flesh of men bible says there is no goodness in the flesh of men if these person if these people who are filthy rags before god unrighteous could be so compassionate imagine god how is going to judge you on that final day without giving any visibility is what you have assumed? Oh, I don't know. This entire Bible is all about laws and commandments. John 14, 21. John 15, 10. Psalm 19, 7. 1 John 5, 3. All these words, what they are saying is all the laws and commandments of God are perfect. None of the laws and commandments of God are burdensome right they are light to the body and lamp to the feet or lamp to the body and light to the feet let god in, instill reproof and re instructions and if corrections and punishment if required proverbs 3 11 and 12 proverbs 6 23 why it is good for god to punish us here because why we have a chance to rectify the errors rather than he punishing there after the verdict is pronounced nobody is there to save no grace period no blood of jesus no name of jesus no angels to come and help you. No Holy Spirit. That's the most important thing. No Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit will be taken away. This Holy Spirit who was who, who was who, who, who was sent to this um, earth after Jesus was taken, as, you know, in the clouds. Likewise, when Jesus lands here, Holy Spirit will be taken up. Right? There is no help. Nobody to rescue. Beloved, are you imagining what will be that moment? When you stand right there in front of God and that Jesus whom you see will be totally a different Jesus. He's not that compassionate Jesus, interceding Jesus, praying Jesus, loving Jesus. Ah. 
you will see the you will see the other face and you better not because where you cannot bear because i can't imagine jesus like that at all even in my dreams whenever he comes i tend to cry see when i say jesus i somehow you know get emotional why because his love kind of melts my heart it kills me why because i'm sinful before him it cost him so much the son of god in fact the god lord god almighty as incarnate deity came in the form of human being this will be you know a structure he took actually he didn't create us as filthy beings by the way after sin entered into our life that adamic sin is reigning in us still the second adam came and he made us as overcomers but the sin is still there why because the ruler of the world is still devil right as long as he is there sin is going to reign in flesh that's why bible says flesh will fight against the spirit okay see i'm setting the context very well okay then we will get into the gods i am more or less sure that i'm not going to complete this session in one hour so we will extend it okay so don't worry don't worry about the time don't worry about the time this is grace period enjoy every hour and learn bible that's why i'm trying to tell you right blessed are those who abide in his laws and commandments why you should abide in law and commandment because you don't want to be thrown into the lake of fire neither would you gladly accept the verdict and want to jump into the lake of fire nobody that's why i gave you that candle example would you put your finger one microsecond on that fire huh because you know how much it is going to be painful burning right and it takes lot of time to heal and it leaves a scar you have to go for a plastic surgery people have gone through fire accidents right it just doesn't the skin doesn't uh, turn to the original color but you fall down or you get scratched somewhere yeah cut in the flesh or on 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 the road you are dragged by the vehicle and something like that all these things the color will come back to the original uh, you know composure the original form but then this burn uh, what is the fire accident burns it doesn't come back to the original color yeah that terrible it is it burns it burns all the cells the originality of the skin is lost i'm not talking about the physical burn here i'm talking about the eternal burn, burn there in at et eternity please you'll be thrown into the lake of fire bible says in revelation revelation 20 no no revelation 20 you can take and read you will find there why thrown because you will not be willing to jump do you realize that every moment when you live your life every moment when you join hands with worldly pleasures knowing that it is sin knowing that the holy spirit inside of you is crying is grieved Ephesians 4:30 says, "Do not grieve the Holy Spirit." About which also I have spoken in a session. It is there in the playlist. Yeah. Why you should not grieve? Because you have to give an account. This Holy Spirit will become your rebel. Understand? Have you tortured him? Have you harassed him? Have you kicked him out? And then you will call him again in the name of Jesus. Come back. Holy Spirit will come. Yeah, that's grace. You will have to give an account, and he will become your rebel. If you're, you know. calling him like an office boy office peon right you call him assign him some work and then kick him out yeah get lost i want to sin you are such a hindrance nuisance yeah holy spirit just get lost go 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 buy something and come people send the uh, somebody to shop right like that you go to the shop and by then i will finish my sinful deeds enjoy my uh, pornography enjoy the adultery enjoy you know with the lying lips enjoy visiting certain places flirting fornication yeah all these things blasphemy self righteous self judge uh, you know prejudice all these things i will enjoy uh, and then i will call you okay in the name of jesus come back and holy spirit comes what is this called as harassment anything that you sin against the son of man that is jesus yeah some blasphemy you spoke fine that will be forgiven jesus will still be forgiving you yeah but holy spirit watch out beloved watch out have you ever realized this is the character of goat according to the bible so far what i have been speaking character of goat i have not in, gone into the character of sheep why more or less sheep is nothing but jesus you just follow the character of jesus you know right philippians 2 you take and read spirit of humility christ like mindset obedience uh, long suffering patience um following the footprints of god praying to god 
always seeking for God, for God's advice. All these things you you want to know about Jesus. Galatians 5, 23, 22 and 23, fruits of the Holy Spirit, nine fruits. Jesus had it 100% in him. That's why Holy Spirit wrote, follow the footsteps of Jesus. He had gone through all of this. Joy, love, peace, patience, long-suffering, self-control, all these things, gentleness, kindness, huh? all this Jesus has accomplished. And another person also said, follow me. Who? Paul. He also fulfilled. If you want to know the character of sheep, Two people, I will give you examples. Very good people, Jesus and Paul. Enough. You just follow their footprints. If you become like them, it's enough. You 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 are already sheep, and sheep are the preferred uh, animal for Jesus, God. And God definitely calls the sheep come to my side. That's no I read no. Those then he will say to those on the left hand side, the goats, depart from me, you cursed into the everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. I told you this. The original design was the lake of fire was created by God to throw the devil and angels. Lake of fire is not yet created, or maybe created, nobody knows, or it is uh, just empty. Why? After the day of judgment, they will all be thrown there. Right now, they are in the bottomless pit, they have been given permission to come up. Devour the mankind because that's a challenge. I explained that Job example, no? Because that's a challenge. You will give me the powers to devour your people, right? I will ensure, what, I, will, I will reveal to you what kind of character they have. And until now, I think 99% of Christians <laughs> are the typical examples for what devil had told. The true character is not to follow God in obedience, but the true character is to fall by the side of devil you don't believe me you just go and explore you will understand what i'm saying but there is one percentage of sheep that is definitely falling by the side of god they just don't get distracted they don't backslide they don't lose their focus right amidst of circumstances and situations that are against them they just cannot be separated from the love of god bible says nothing can separate us from the love of god you are one of them. God bless you. Right. But majority of the people I'm talking about Christendom. I'm talking about Christians. I'm not talking about non-Christians or unbelievers because uh, they made the choice to move away from Jesus. And may God bless them. Someday, you know, they may become the first. Today, they are the last. Someday, they may, they may become first. Who knows? I'm, I'm not cursing them. May God. I'm, I'm praying for them every day. You also should pray. Right. But I'm talking about the Christians. Many people don't even know. That they are goats. They think they are sheep, but they are goats. Now, I'm going to explain you in a while. The next 30 minutes, we will be talking few details about the sheep and goats. And I have few questions and I will be answering those. Right. So. You clearly understood. Huh? To understand what the Bible means and does it mean by this uh, time, you should have got an attitude to go and explore. Correct? No, especially about eternal life, eternity. I keep telling you and Jesus also spoke about this multiple times in the book of Matthew. I have spoken and preached also. Do not worry about your life here. What you will eat, what you will wear. Huh? Look at the birds of the air and look at them. Is not God feeding them? Do they even pray to God? Actually, no, but God takes care of them. Why? Because he created. No, and he has the responsibility. You are teaching some responsibility to God. If he can take care of his creations, five sensed animals and birds, won't he take care of you? You were formed in the image of God. Holy Spirit is in you. Do not worry. Why? Because it's useless for you to think and overthink about the things that are here. That's mean, that doesn't mean you need to sit sluggish, lazy, yeah, and sending wife to work and you sitting here at home and praying. Why? Because uh, there is no point working, brother. Anyway. This is all not going to take me to heaven and all that. No, no, no. You have your earthly duties. If you don't do that for that alone, you will be judged and you will be still thrown into the lake of fire. Therefore, those who shall not work shall not eat. That commandment will judge you. Okay. You're asking me, is it in Bible? It is in your Bible. You just open and read it properly. Paul told it. Why? Early age Christians became that sluggards. Yes, very sluggish. All of them sold their property. They opened a common bank, bank account. Maybe they formed a trust, I think. And all of them will sit and eat breakfast, pray. Eat lunch, pray. And eat uh, dinner, pray and sleep. 
this is what was happening in routine right god never created for this purpose no you have to be the children of light share the word of god with each other right you need to walk around and but still you have to work earn and work and yet you have to do the ministries what we are doing now is currently part time ministry i'm a professional yet i have to serve god with the time that i have with the time i make time apart from my work over the weekends right i pick a not time that i finish all my work i don't ditch my employer i don't pick office hours you understand what i'm saying what i mean to say here is if of course the employer is praying, uh, paying me and therefore priority goes to work but the remaining time i'm using it for ministries yeah we are all supposed to work earn and then still serve god in the ways i'm not asking you to become preachers and teachers you want to do that little bit of charity you want to visit slum slum kids and teach them something you want to go to hospital and pray for the sick or bless them or pay them medical bills you are a billionaire please go give them some money no what what pleasure you get oh you know i am the third richest person in the district of uh, karnataka or tamil nadu what what do you gain right or assigning the check and just giving to escape from tax yeah yeah you take it no you go there personally attend to their needs otherwise you will be judged right you did not give clothes when i was shivering in cold you did not give me some warm clothes you did not attend to me when i was sick in the bed then these people will ask when did when we were sick and all that right that's exactly what i'm trying to say you are that wicked person god gave you money just not to throw it like throwing the bones to the dogs no you should should show that respect and warmth uh, loving the mankind okay enough these are all the characters uh, characteristic characteristic uh, differences between the sheep and god already the session is over more or less you would have got a essence of or foretaste of what i'm going to preach in the coming sessions are you finding it interesting so far okay good i also gave you multiple refer references also right now why gods why did god come so hard against the gods see jesus didn't spell out exactly why the gods were the bad guys <laughs> <laughs> in the parable right uh, but many have speculated here is what a writer by name adam clark i was actually going through his commentary right now sheep which have ever been considered as the um, symbol of mildness simplicity patience usefulness right very useful sheep wool no what do you do during cold season the whole world is basically bearing this sheep's cloth and this fellow is the one who is keeping the whole the whole world warm during winter seasons correct no you see his picture such a innocent fellow right look at him i whenever i look at the sheep in the picture also i feel like hugging the picture i love this sheep so much first of all that fur wool right it makes me to just go and embrace them i i don't know i love it right and then their innocent look especially the baby uh, sheep wow so cute white in appearance and so innocent and the way how it it says that man man it 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 just you know exclaims that innocence that it is dependent all these things comes and that's why i explain simplicity patience usefulness why patient patiently it will follow the shepherd patiently it will tune your tune it tune its ears to shepherd's voice shepherd says man it is all will exclaim man shepherd will move this side it will just follow the footsteps uh, of the shepherd shepherd's voice it, it its ears are always tuned to the shepherd's voice if the shepherd's voice is missing for some time it will turn around and see where the shepherd is it will not move away why it is so scared it has the trust understand represents here the genuine disciples of christ will also need to inherit these characters that's why god loves the character of sheep the disciples of christ will have to follow the footsteps of Christ and his teachings and his doctrines and his laws and commandments what not right so goats which are naturally having these kind of characters like quarrelsome have you seen goats will fight they will have horns and they will fight 
with each other and um and that that's their character right and excessively kind of ill scented they will they will smell too much why because these goats will can be fed with anything anything means it will not eat non vegetarian you just give them anything um even a ugly rotten vegetable you give it eat but that sheep no that fellow won't eat he will be running for the pastures the newly um formed grass or newly grown up grass it will just go over that and even it lead that's why we in bible where in the book of leviticus when moses gave the list of animals to be eaten sheep would come there no goat will come why because this goat will be feeding will be fed with everything it eat everything no there will be a lot of toxic elements so you cook that and eat there will be a lot of toxicity getting into your body and it will harm you not only it means the toxicity from the meat perspective but the character also is toxic yeah as christians you go around you mix with world you will do something some some nonsense there then you go to church and you don't even test the spirit of the person who is talking to you that also you will eat huh? then you will go to the bar and you will just have a little pig and then you will go there meet a friend and have a little smoke huh? then go to that sister and start grumbling and murmuring and cursing somebody what is this goat habit toxicity toxicity being injected into your heart mind poisoned with all these things which rebel against the doctrines of jesus this is not this is exactly opposite to the teachings of jesus commands of jesus right and this is called a symbol symbols of being you know uh, rebellious profane impurity right bible says in 1 timothy 4:12 you know you need to be a role model of, of uh, as a man with faith love and purity right if somebody looks at you hey here is a christian he is a man of faith love and purity he never gets angry he forgives people and he is very patient and he is pure nothing can defile him you try bribing him this guy will say i don't want that's how people should look at you and me correct or not okay i hope you follow what i'm trying to say for the last 30 minutes or so right so here we see that the differences i mean i'm already getting into the details of um, i mean you know helping you understand the key differences from spiritual angle uh, from goats versus sheep perspective right and be sure to um, also read um, more of these parables that is wise virgins versus foolish virgins and foolish servants versus uh, wise servants and sorry wicked servants versus uh, uh, wise servants and uh, parable of talents all these things are signifying the difference between the evil and good right and bible calls the goat behavior the character of a goat as a wicked Uh, i mean that's the wicked nomenclature i mean nomenclature for wickedness uh, if you want to encompass it in the name of one animal that's goat right the nomenclature for righteousness you want to encompass it into one animal called as sheep you're able to understand that's how that's the reason how you need to visualize and read bible or you know connect dots and read bible okay now but of course if you Uh, the lesson of the parable has little to do with the actual sheep and goats <laughs> as i told you whose behavior is based on you know uh, those are animals that's the way how they were created but we are not created like animals right but we become like one we become like a wolf we become like a oh, fox we become like a serpent we become like sheep we become like goat we have a free will right can the goat make a choice if the goat is being preached this message what would the goat say hey i want to become a sheep man I don't want to be the bad animal. I don't want to be the cursed one that to Jesus cursing me. No, he is my creator, my boss. But poor God doesn't have the choice. But you and I have the choice. Yeah, today you are that God brother. You are that God sister. You can become that sheep brother or sheep sister. Yeah, I'm not talking about interchanging of gender. <laughs> I'm I'm saying that um, you can change your behavior. You can change your instincts. it is possible how you just have to introspect repent and sin no more is what jesus kept on telling everyone 
right wherever he went right so jesus was using the general differences in their natures to teach an important lesson about the way he is observing the behavior pattern in the people right and 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 uh, and he's also conveying a strong message based on your behavior the decisions you make the way how you judge people the way how you do not confess your sins but you hold the other person for his sins you're going to give an account and you will be judged in the likely manner right according to the choices you make in your heart the decisions you make wicked decisions righteous decisions whatever you will be judged accordingly so the context of the parable of the sheep and goats right that we read in matthew um, 24 see i have not even gone into the passage yet right matthew 24 3 now he sat on a mount olives and uh, the disciples came to him privately saying tell us when these things will be right now and that's how the, he starts the uh, what i say sermon on the mount I'm, I'm connecting the dots slowly just give me some time okay now jesus prophecy started in answer to the disciples question from Matthew 24 3 the rest of chapter 24 gives details about what will happen before his second coming to earth just now I have come out of a series about Jesus is coming soon seven sessions have been spoken it's almost like an eight hours material please go through it right and I didn't talk about the science and mathematics arithmetic formula and etc etc there right that many people have done that job and still they i can prove that they are not right why no one knows the hour or day then why are you getting into those mathematics but i have touched a little bit about the signs those 12 signs or 13 signs which jesus gave earthquakes and kingdom fighting against kingdom nation against nation behavior pattern will change and stuff like that i spoke about that only in the last session but the first six sessions i've spoken more about how the christendom is moving towards the wicked side towards the side of the goat Whoever started as sheep over a period of time, they did this kind of surgery. They consulted some doctor, I think. They did this surgery and they want to become goat. Have you seen that kind of surgery is possible, right? Male want to become female, female want to become male. Some surgeries are there, some crazy surgeries. You have not heard anything about that, forget it, right? You have heard nothing. <laughs> so it's unnecessary for you to even sit in Google, right? The rest of chapter 24 gives details about what will happen before a second coming to earth to save humanity from what? Self-destruction destruction or self-deception, uh, I would call, right? James 4.8 and James 1.22, you take and read. That's not part of my notes, but I remembered it. Okay, now Christ's return and the establishment of his perfect government is the only solution. To this world you know spiraling um, between evil and disaster then chapter 25 continues with the three parables i already uh, preached about this in the other series right parable of the talents also i have done okay and it talks about the master's return and how prepared we must be otherwise we are going to be judged real bad the parable of the wise and foolish virgins demonstrate the importance of Always staying close to God and always being prepared for his coming. Watching and waiting reverentially. Yeah. The parable of the talent shows the necessity of, you know, being diligent, doing the work of God. And that gives us to do and grow um, spiritually. It gives much to do and then we grow spiritually. Then comes the parable of the sheep and goats. Right? Our sheep and goats. And then... You know, here here is highlighting what it is the, I mean, what um, uh, uh, highlighting the underlying motivation we must have. You know, true followers of Jesus Christ will be growing in self-sacrificing love. That's the point. Actually, you will see the actual parable being described in Matthew 21 verses 31 to 25. Matthew 25 verses 31 to 46. That's the third parable in a row. Imagine if Jesus talks about all of this immediately after the Sermon on the Mount. Sermon on the Mount itself is a heavy lifting topic. You and I cannot digest it so easily. But after that, again, he feeds with more appetite. And Matthew records all of this so beautifully in Matthew 25. Right? He talks in a row, three parables. Matthew 24, end of 24. You will see the parable being uh, you know, um, explained. Faithful servant and evil servant. 
and then he talks again about why wise virgin foolish virgin and then he talks about the parable of the talents and then he talks about the sheep and the lamb sorry the sheep and the goats that means four parables in a row just to explain what he spoke on the on the sermon uh, mount on the sermon sorry sermon on the mount okay so that means what he's giving utter importance to just one topic hey watch out how the day will look like for you i mean the judgment day will look like for you you your deeds are going to be questioned you are under microscope your wife will not be questioned your parents will not be questioned your husband will not be questioned you will be questioned and put yourself into the shoes of that faithful servant or evil servant put yourself into the shoes of the wise virgin or foolish virgin put yourself yourself into the shoes of that um, servants who have been given the talents yet they did not use that wicked servant are you the one who buried it under the ground and still justifying wicked attitude and then put yourself into the shoes of sheep or goat right have you seen any time and nowhere in the bible you will see jesus emphasizing on a single topic so much that two in a row it's very 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 hard to find why because if jesus is talking about one topic in two chapters heavy lifting it's all about it right so the lesson for us from the parable are actually many right but then we need to get into the details the message to the righteous sheep and to the selfish goat right how do i how i look at this i call sheep as righteous and goats as selfish selfish goats so let me read that verse for you right when the um wait okay and he will uh, he will set the sheep on his right hand but the goats on the left and the king will say um to those on his right hand come you blessed of my father inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world for i was hungry you fed me and all that right why because this sheep's attitude is not to keep things for itself not not to quarrel not to be selfish that's what jesus is trying to say but don't ask me how do you know brother sheep is not selfish all of them they eat no and all have you seen any sheep fighting for food and all that i haven't observed maybe it fights but then that's how jesus determines um you know marking the character of goat versus sheep so let's stick to that right you know the creator knows better than us definitely right because he's a creator so let's stick to that now jesus gave the same checklist for um human deeds and the difference was the sh- was that the sheep fulfilled these needs for others while the goats did not i will explain that so then the king will say um to those on the right hand come you blessed of your father and all that you know i was naked you clothed me i was sick you visited me i was in prison you came right matthew 25 34 to 36 of course the sheep were confused by this they knew that sheep means what the righteous people sheep means righteous people goat means selfish people living for themselves keeping everything for them so here doesn't mean only about the charity giving money right so people who went to prison they they did not give money but they went and spoke about the god right people who are sentenced to death they spoke about jesus they saved them redeemed their soul yet they were killed according to the verdict right but then their soul is now rejoicing in heaven right it's not about money alone it's about giving your uh, putting in your efforts and sharing that good news and saving a soul attitude sheep's attitude righteous attitude right and the king will answer saying to them assuredly i say to you in as much as you did it to one of the least of these my brethren we count all these prisoners as the least no yeah yeah he deserves for that punishment we all judge them no nodding our head when sickness comes on some brother they'll say yeah yeah he has some there is some sin that's why he is god has judged him right but uh, therefore we consider them as the least they deserve means what they are the least but then the sheep this is god's language the sheep's language they won't consider them as least they will visit them with compassion they will help them not just sympathy but empathizing yeah and the king is answering them verse number 40 so if we are to the to be the blessed sheep not the cursed goats 
we must recognize the needs of others and work to fulfill them, help them. Within our limits, right? You don't have money. God is not asking you to open up a press and print currency and give it to them, fake money. No, not like that. Examine what you're talented, what you're capable. And then please help people within your boundaries, limits. And that's the talent for which he's, the, he's asking an account. He, God blesses all of us with the talents. Parable of talents explains that, right? The previous parable just before the golden sheep parable. It explains that he's going to only ask an account of what he has given. If he has not given money, God won't ask you, right? You think he's going to be as stupid as men who is going to, you know, wage war for all stupid topics? No. A God is God of wisdom and compassionate father, right? And we must do it till it becomes so natural we don't even realize what we are doing it, right? Right hand, left hand, not know uh, what right hand is giving. Don't be that hypocrites blowing the trumpet, standing at the corner of the street. Matthew chapter 6, you take and read. You should be giving in silence. You're doing charity, do it in silence. Yeah, I've seen in some churches, people would even print their names in fan. The fan will be re revolving with their name. Speaker donated by so-and-so. Mr. George was the one who brought this charge. And George's name will be printed in every chair. Now, whoever is having the name as George, don't get offended. I just picked a name randomly, right? Christ is looking for service motivated by compassion rather than service done for show off. Hmm? He wants us to give to those who can do nothing for us in return. By the way, you need to handpick such people whom you know for sure. They just cannot repay what you're giving them. They just cannot give the best of the food that you're serving them. They just cannot give you back the best of the clothes that you have given them. Huh? The best of advice, best of motivation. They don't have the skills or wisdom to motivate you back during your situations where you need help. You may not get it back. But are you still willingly contributing? John asks if we can't love people. We have seen how can we truly love God whom we have not seen. 1 John 4.20 Attitude of sheep is all about not expecting anything in return. Attitude of God always prejudice. I did so much for that guy. Did he at least speak a word? Look at the attitude of Jesus, sheep attitude, right? He blesses them, miracle is worked out, blind is getting their sight, lame being healed, made to walk, don't tell anyone. That's what he tells, no? Don't tell anyone. Why? Sheep attitude. I don't need your praises, man, but you do not sin, repent. You do not sin, else a worse thing will cling you. He will warn them, instruct them strictly, but they still go and spread the news. What can Jesus do about it, right? That's that's not the sheep attitude. Sorry, that's not the yeah, that's not the that's not the goat's attitude. Goat goat exp, ex, expects that kind of praises honor. <clears throat> so the goats might see someone in need of food and clothing and say, "Depart in peace, be warmed and filled." James two sixteen. But a righteous sheep will follow the example of Jesus, who even though. He was so busy, he did not even have time to eat, was moved with compassion for the crowd. Mark 6, 31, 34, about the attitude of Jesus. Right? Um, without giving, you know, people saying that, you know, do this, do that and all that, it's not the right attitude, according to the Bible. But then, um, it's not even, you know, sim you know sim sympathizing. <laughs> even people who sympathize would at least, you know, spare few um, cents or few rupees. Yeah, people who empathize, they will just give in splendid measures. Right? And look at the attitude of Jesus. <clears throat> three days and three nights, nobody asks even a word uh, to fee feed them or they did not express their hunger. But Jesus was moved with compassion. And he calls all these fellows, disciples. He then fed them both spiritually with his teaching and physically by multiplying the five loaves and two fish. Verses 35 to 40, 44, Mark 6. A God's, sheep's, God's sheep must follow the example of their compassionate good shepherd. <sighs> right? So I think I covered majority of it. So my personal experience with sheep and goats, if you want me to explain. I would say, I don't really care for sheep. I have to confess that, right? Growing up, um, I've spent, um, you know, shepherding a lot of sheep 
and I found them to be helpless. Now, who are these people Christians called us? They are sheep. They are not goats. But each time I go to them, I look at them as sheep. Sheep attitude is, sorry, sheep's clothing is there, but the attitude is like goat. And when I end up, when I end up saying that, they get offended. They get angry. I'm not talking about non-Christians. I'm not talking about unbelievers. I'm talking about the believers, right? And you are called that as the false prophets and false servants too, or false teachers too, right? When sheep's clothing, they come and they have the goat's attitude or they have the wolf in them, devouring, biting them, right? See, two kinds of people, right? In sheep's clothing, goat's attitude means being unaware of their sins, self-deception, huh? Probably they have a second chance. They can wake up. They they will definitely come to life, come to light. Okay, come to life and light. But these guys with sheep's clothing, but having the wolf attitude, fox attitude, cunning attitude to bite the flesh. Right. I think I spoke about this little story. Right. One crow was having some some something very delicious in its mouth, and the sheep wanted it. Sorry, and the fox wanted it, and fox started praising. Oh, crow, uh, how, how is that? You, how beautifully your voice is every day that I hear. And today I'm not able to hear it at all. I really miss it, man. I die to death. What a beautiful voice. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pleading. Can you just please only once sing that craw, craw for me? And then this idiot crow, what it does, opens its mouth wide. Craw, craw, proudly. What happens? The food fallen down. And Fox said, yeah, beautiful voice. Enjoy your voice. I will enjoy your food. And it went off. Right? That's that's the attitude of many false prophets. Right? They want to grab people's money. Fooling them. Right? Influencing them. Blindfolding them. Right? And deceiving them. Leading them into deception and blindfolding them so while they do all of this what you people are doing are you want to be like do you want to be like those uh, stupid crow right open your mouth open sit sit get up stand up stand up what who is he to instruct you right you go by the word of god look at what the laws and commandments of god is instructing you and me and walk by that you need not heed the voice of any human being no one has authority to dictate other than god yeah and even the elders of the church would be dictating. You can always go back and check the word of God. That's how Bereans, right? The people of Beraya, what they did, they even verified what Paul was saying is true or not. You need to live like them. Otherwise, brothers, I'm telling you this. You are the one who is going to face the judgment for being a fool. God would still throw you into the lake of fire. You cannot blame that for a guy deceived me. This guy spoke the lie of the devil and all that. No, he was he was doing his job. What you were doing? Sitting like a mad fellow. Right. These are my experiences when I try to get into the lives of certain brothers and sisters and try to admonish and help them. I see either of these attitude, either they are fools, you know, innocent fools or they are devouring you know wicked fools that is wickedness with foolishness right and they are still christians wickedness mixed with foolishness why they ignore the word of god as fools and they consider the deception of the evil spirit as wicked wow what an image you know my god they're even worse than devils devil is only wicked but still clever these guys are fools as christians and wicked as devils what you call this flavor as I cannot think of a name. You give it a name. Okay. But you don't be like one of those guys. <sighs> Bible talks about the stories of selfless services. Right. You want to really become a sheep. You want to move from goat attitude to sheep. I'm going to depict few incidents from the Bible and with that be close. <clears throat> when two strangers came into Sodom, Lot insisted them to come to his home so he could show them hospitality and give them safety. Very good attitude. Genesis 19, 1 to 3. That's the sheep attitude. Abraham did not immediately ring him up. Hey, Lord, you know what? Just now I met with two people. They are just on their way. Sorry, three people. They're on their way. No, there is no telecommunication there, right? Yet, it was the attitude of Lot to show that gratitude. 
that sheep's attitude. When a stranger asked for a drink of water, Rebecca said, Drink, my lord. Afterwards, she added, I will draw water for your camel also until they have finished drinking. And again, there is no, you know, telecommunication, right? It was not the servant of Abraham rung up uh, Rebecca and said, Hey, Rebecca, I'm coming like this. Yeah, you behave like that so that I can take you back to my lord. Nothing like that. It's attitude. Neither did an angel come and instruct Rebecca, Hey, this is how you should behave. Genesis 24, 18 to 19. It was an attitude. It comes naturally. Or you, you inculcate. Yeah, you don't have that attitude, but more you get closer to God, you inculcate that attitude, behave like God, you become like God, right? Imagine how much water 10 thirsty camels could drink and she drew water for all of those camels. Attitude, no measures, yeah, gratitude doesn't have limits. Good example. Another example, when evil Jezebel was killing the prophets of God, Ahab's servant Obadiah, he was a prophet to Obadiah, the book of Obadiah. Hid 100 men of the Lord's prophets, 50 to a cave and fed them with bread and water in the midst of the terrible drought. And if this guy is going to be caught, he's going to be killed too. 1 Kings 18, 13. And he didn't bother about his life. Sheep's attitude. They don't even think about their, you know, life or death. They will just move boldly. They are not like fools, but this guy knows how to hide them. And he didn't allow them to get caught. Neither did he get caught. Right? He works in brilliance, intellectuals. The wisdom of God is enlightened in him. True God in him. Yet, look at the attitude, right? Jezebel was such a uh, worst, worst of the worst female. The spirit of Jezebel is, was ruling in one church um, in the book of Revelation, right? The third letter I spoke about it. I forgot. Um, Thyatria. Thyatira. Thyatira. Right? And where the pastor's wife was running the show. And she had the spirit of Jezebel. Next, Dorcas was full of good works and charitable deeds. Making clothes for all the widows. I'm picking up these examples. Why? Because these are the most ignored. We talk about Elijah, Elijah's and Abraham's and Jacob's and all that, right? We don't think about these silent personalities. He made clothes for all the widows. Free. Dorcas, Acts 9.36 and 39. What a great brother of God, isn't it? What a great brother in Christ. Do you have the sheep's attitude? Doing the charitable. And he, he, he was doing it for free. But it cost him, right? And he was not to be known as one of the prominent rich men. He was a normal human being. A common man. Yet he had that attitude, desire to serve. Probably was not that foolish to take some loan and gift it to widows. No. But with that little he had, he gave a portion of that to the widows. Excellent attitude. Right? Don't be that stupid. So get all getting all worked up. I need to donate to somebody and taking a loan, personal loan for 10 lakhs and giving it to some charitable organization. Who will repay that 10 lakhs? God never asks you to do that. Don't kill yourself to uh, serve others. Not like that. But it's your attitude from what you have. The author of the Hebrews praised those who had compassion on me in my chains and joyfully accepted the plundering of your goods. Hebrews 10.34. Here Paul appreciates people who had that concern. Right. By this, we will end the session uh, and uh, I will see if I have to take part two. Are you not enjoying just to help you understand who you are? I think I will definitely go for one more session. I mean, extended session of this. But uh, today the time is up. All right. Um, and we will try to cover more topics in that second session. Good. God bless you. Heads bowed down and Eyes closed, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for helping us to understand the real who we are. Lord, we want to transform and get onto the side of sheep's attitude. If we are goats today, thank you for, first of all, helping us understand that we are goats and not sheep. And you only can help us to get to the real side of Jesus. Jesus' attitude was all about sheep's attitude. So help us, God. Let there be renewal of my transformation of spirit. Romans 12, 1 to be fulfilled in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you, okay? Please subscribe to our channel. Get access to all the playlist videos and yeah, teachings and preachings and like this. It'll only help you. I can guarantee one thing. It will only help you to grow in the spiritual, spiritually and march forward in your spiritual growth. Because these are all messages from the Holy Spirit. I'm Highly committed and inspired by the Holy Spirit, not doing it for my prejudice, 
these some of these messages are even helping me right while i'm talking to you even i am analyzing who i am i'm not mr perfect but we both are equal under the throne of grace we both needed this message pass this to your friends and relatives god bless you i'll see you soon